Hello everyone, my name is Music Man, and this is going to be my conclusion to the Spawn Point Guide series. In this video, I'm going to be walking through each of the seven Spawn Point Guides on Ever Sleeping Town. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through each of the spawns and just kind of give an overview of where the survivors are likely to go and where I would go when I get each individual spawn. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everyone. So now we're going to walk through the spawn point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to define my terms. Now, I don't have specific names for every single area in this map. I've got names for the majority of the areas in this map, um, but I'll, I'll just tell you all what I've got right now. So um, this right here, this is graveyard. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the strongest areas in this map to kite in. It's kind of like the tombstone in Red Church, but in my opinion, it's a lot stronger. You got this god palette right there. You got this area in the back. So even if you have to leave the um, graveyard area, which has all sorts of pallets that make it really tough for hunters weak to tight kiting to chase in, um, you've got areas to help you sort of transition out of there. So generally speaking, that's not the greatest place to go to, although... If it is like the most convenient spawn point, um, I believe it's spawn group seven that I'm going to say um, you might want to consider going to. But yeah, generally speaking, I don't recommend it. So let me see right here. This is the two story, uh, which features a hole in the middle and occasionally a cypher spawn in a window at the end. Um, that's pretty much an area that's like in the middle. That's a good transitioning tool for survivors to either get to graveyard or um, to make it to these god pallets over in this area um yeah and then this right here this is going to be middle so from middle you can pretty much transition to anywhere in the map um, so usually if you get middle they'll either transition straight to two-story or they'll work their way towards corner house but yep that's the middle area uh, this right here is Corner House. Corner House features similar things to Two Story, but the thing that makes it so much stronger is that survivors have, after they jump, uh, there's there's a side window in it as well. And it's not just the one window at the end. There's a window right here and a window right there. So already lots of areas for it to go in the house, but once they vault this window right here, they can either choose to loop back around and go back up the staircase or go over here to where a bunch of pallets are. So that's, again, a very powerful uh, kiting area for survivors. And the only way to really be successful chasing there is if you're carrying blink, and there can be a blink trick where you go on the side of the stairs and then you blink over and get a hit without attack recovery. Although that is a very advanced thing to do, um, and it's really tough to pull off. So, yep, there's that. Um, and this I'll either call front gate, or for the sake of this video to be super clear, I'll call this uh, corner house gate. Um, and then this right here, either back gate or uh, graveyard gate. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all my terms defined. Um, and notice I didn't really call these two areas anything. I don't really have specific names for those areas, but if I ever refer to them, I'll just circle the area and be like this area or whatever. Um, but yeah, so now we can start by walking through the spawn groups. And we start off with, of course, spawn group one. Um, now, standard rotation in this area would be to go to this metal cipher, and a lot of times um, this survivor will transition out right away. Um, standard rotation is to get out of that center, since a lot of hunters like to go there first, but on occasion, you'll find a survivor that sticks on that cipher, and, but if that's not a survivor you want to chase or whatever, this survivor is likely to go corner house, and you don't want to start there. But this survivor, there's a decent chance they'll stay in this area, either when this cipher spawns right here or this cipher. So I would recommend going to middle like this and then going right over to this area. And 
Same thing with the Leo's memory one. In my opinion, you only really need to memorize two spawns because after that point, there's a good chance that enough decoding will have progressed that you'll be able to um, find out where the other survivors are decoding and then use your intuition to go from there. So yeah, that's spawn group one. And now we're going to move on to spawn group two. Um, it's a similar spawn. Uh, we got a survivor spawning graveyard, survivor spawning corner house. So those two survivors are not super ideal chases. But what I like to do here, and you'll notice this with a lot of the, a lot of the spawn points in this map, is standard rotation is to go to this middle survivor, and that's why a lot of survivors what they'll do is they'll do everything they can to get out of the middle. Um, but yeah, so I would go to that middle cipher if they stick on that cipher, uh, good for you. If not, uh, the second best thing would be to go up the two story to this survivor right here, which is very unlikely to rotate out, um, until they get that ping from the survivor at the middle cipher. Um, but yeah, and then... It's going to be really tough, but your only other options of chase would either be to go to corner house or to go to graveyard, which I generally do not recommend. In this map, I would probably say you're going to want to stick with one of your first two survivors because it's um, a lot of the pallets and stuff are really good for kiting. So the chase is going to take long no matter who you get. So you most likely would want to settle for your first two survivors. You don't want to get rotated too hard as well because it is a ginormous map. So it can be really hard to find many survivors after your first couple that you found. And that would be spawn group two. Now we're going to move on to spawn group three, which is the tram spawn. Now there are two strategies that I have used in this map. Um, one would be just like the same as usual. I'm going to go to center right here. The survivor is likely to go to that cipher. Um, and that's what I do now. But what I used to do is I actually, the, the tram spawns right there. And the tram is going to end around this area. Sometimes either one or the other of these survivors will transition towards this cipher that spawns right here or right here. And that would actually give you a start of a chase as well in a less than ideal area for kiting for survivors. I mean, there's still stuff there, but less than the rest of the map. Um, so that's just two options for you. And then obviously another survivor is going to spawn here. Um, and then one right there in graveyard. But generally speaking, I would say stick to one of those two strategies. If this survivor on the tram isn't one you want to go to, then once again, you're going to want to go to middle. And then if it really comes down to it, you can cut across to either this cipher or this cipher. Uh, depends on what cipher is wiggling at that point. And that is spawn point three for you. Now we're going to move on to spawn group four, which is the corner house spawn. Okay. Now, what I like to do with this spawn is I actually, uh, I think this is what I do with both spawn group four and spawn group five. I actually come straight across to the survivor that's right here. A lot of times that area, that strip down the middle there is so open that you'll be able to see where that survivor is at and where they decide to go. Now they're either gonna choose to go around back here or over kind of like this general direction. Um, they're going to choose either one of those two places. And then if you don't find a survivor there, this survivor is really likely to rotate towards this cipher if it spawns. And that will be your second survivor to chase. So that's just what I do there. And that is about all I have for spawn group four. Now spawn group five, generally speaking, same thing as spawn group four. And what I do with spawn group five is again, go right down the strip here. This, this survivor is likely to go to this cipher if it spawns. There's one that's either like in front of corner house or there's one a little bit to the side. Um, but if this isn't who you wanna chase, 
um, go for this survivor right here. It's likely to do the same sort of rotation as if you got spawn group four. Now, this one is a little bit more favorable because you can see no survivor spawns graveyard and they are a bit more clumped together. So it's a bit easier for you to find other survivors in this general area if the first one is not who you want to chase. So you can pretty much just do like a little loop until you find who you want there. <laughs> I noticed the way I drew like the, the arrow and stuff made a little smiley face. It's a little adorable. Okay. Um, yeah, right there. A little smiley face. Okay. That's enough of that. I'm going to move on to spawn group six. So this is the graveyard spawn. And what I do when I get this area is this survivor is probably going to transition corner house. But a lot of times what I do is I'll actually weave through to the middle. And you'll notice this a lot of times standard rotation is for each of these spawns to the middle. So it's the same way with Red Church. The standard rotation would be towards that, that back gate. In Eversleeping, you wanna to go towards the middle. It's uh, one of the hardest areas for survivors to go to. Um, when they're caught in, hard to transition away, um, at least harder than the rest of the map. So you can go to middle there, and if this isn't the survivor you wanna chase, you can keep going to this corner right here, who spawns on the opposite side of the map as you and you can see there's a survivor in two story a survivor that's likely to go to corner house so again two not super ideal chases so the route that i just described would be the route that i would generally speaking stick with on spawn group six and now we're going to move on to the final spawn group spawn group seven which is the back gate or graveyard gate uh, spawn so actually, um, looking at this spawn point, um, I believe this was in the final round of the Macabre tournament. I alien got this spawn and actually went towards Graveyard. And I think one of these survivors actually transitioned into Graveyard, which isn't super uncommon because um, this survivor might want to take over this survivor, Cypher. So you can actually go towards this way and maybe loop around and kind of hunt in this area. Um, but most of the time what I like to do is stick with the same general formula of going to the middle cipher. It's a lot easier to remember that way. And you can always go to this survivor in the corner if the one in the middle is not worth chasing. And then from there, the uh, chances are pretty high that this cipher and this cipher are going to be the ones decoded. There is a small chance this survivor will go towards the corner house uh, ciphers somewhere in this area. Um, but in my experience, that has not been super likely. But yeah, those are all seven of the ever sleeping uh, spawn points. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it particularly helpful. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this and uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section below and i'll see you all next time bye bye